I guess this uh, whole thing came about when um, Alicia um, emailed me and asked would I be willing to come out and do a presentation. I'd been out here before and was involved uh, with sort of a Q&A type thing and so I was eager to, to jump on it. And then I found out that I, it was just me presenting. Um, I'm not throwing you under the bus. Um, I'm just saying, I, I didn't realize that, uh, that I was gonna be the only one presenting. You would think that a guy who shaves all the hair off his body and puts oil on and gets on stage in his underwear would totally be comfortable standing amongst you and talking, but um, that's actually not necessarily my comfort zone. So um, bear with me. And, uh, but also thank you to Dave and, and to you and to Joe for, for all the work that you've done to put this together. I think what I really appreciate and am grateful for with Elite FTS is that they, they care about their customers in terms of uh, educating and opening up opportunities like this for, for people to share their experiences with each other. I think that's unique to, to maybe powerlifting, certainly unique to bodybuilding, and so I'm, I'm thankful that I could be here. Um, I asked if I'm coming, I would prefer to speak to uh, the, the audience in which is going to attend. And so I said, you know, what, what are the demographics? What are the type of people that are gonna be here? I mean, obviously it's gonna be people who like to lift weights and such. Um, but, you know, I would, I would like to speak on stuff that would benefit those people. And so they put out um, a survey online, maybe some of you took it, and, and got some feedback on what specifically uh, people would like to have me speak on. And so <clears throat> those, those items were improve, uh, nutrition for improving health, training for longevity, and maintaining a positive life balance. Nutrition for improving health, I thought that was interesting because I'm not a nutritionist. And uh, training for longevity, I thought that was interesting because I'm not a trainer. So I, I don't have, I guess, um, in some ways I, I feel underqualified to speak to you on, on some of these topics. And even though my wife did a great job of saying how well I balance my life, um, we had an argument a week ago and she said, your priorities are jacked up and you, bodybuilding's too high on the priority list. So um, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I perfected that skill either. Um, I guess that's part of marriage that there's give and take and those type of discussions. And she still came with me out here and gave, gave a glowing introduction. So I think, I'm, I think I've crossed that speed bump. Um, at any rate, so here we are. There I am in the beginning. My mom graciously painting me with ProTan. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how many of you have ever competed in bodybuilding, but the best invention ever was the creation of these spray guns, where now you just pay somebody and you go and they spray you and they do it like twice and you're like ready for the stage. But back in the day, you actually had to get this nasty smelling stuff and paint yourself with like billions of coats of paint and, uh, and it was awful. And so there was my mom assisting me with that and uh, the picture next to that was my first bodybuilding contest the Northwest Natural and I entered that and won the teenage division and was on cloud nine and hooked and that's sort of I guess um, how I got my start. Dave did mention also um, I guess I'm going to share my experiences more than anything and and what what I think works and what, what has helped me through the years in regards to those topics that people wanted me to speak upon. And so if I have any qualifications, it is that I've, I've trained for, for 29 years and, uh, you know, 14 professionally, 24 years um, competing uh, either in the NPC or, and now IFBB. I think this last year, I, I did plan on competing in like maybe two contests 
And as is usually the case, and much to the dismay of my wife, I ended up doing six. Uh, partly because I didn't expect to win um, qualifying for the Olympia. If you don't know, if you win, you automatically qualify. If you don't win um, second through fifth, you accumulate points. So it's sort of like you just have to compete a bunch of times to accumulate points so that you can then go to the Olympia, even though your body's totally burnt out and you're going to get your ass kicked. Um, so the goal would be to win, but I never won. So I planned on doing like two or three, I think. I dieted, got, a little, got ready a little bit early, and so I ended up uh, doing the Toronto, placed fourth, and then went to Anchorage a couple weeks after that and won my first pro contest since turning pro in 2004, which was a bit of a shock, and then went to Chicago and won that contest and then went to Vancouver, BC, partly because I just signed the contract on all these and I didn't want to back out. And so I went to Vancouver, BC and won there. And, and that was first week of July, I want to say. So I had been dieting for, you know, several months leading up to that group of contests. And that was going to be my season. But then, you know, I just won three shows. Like I can't not do the, do the Olympia because you know, they've overlooked me in the past. They can't overlook me if I've competed and won three contests, right? That's the thinking. And, my, and Christina did say, you should go do the Olympia. And so I went and did the Olympia and got totally overlooked. The three, three wins didn't really matter. Um, and then uh, went to Korea, South Korea the week after that and competed there as well, partly just to take my daughter and have that experience with her. Um, so that was, that's been my last year, um, and that's, you know, 33 pro contests, uh, five Olympia appearances, uh, once in the open before they had weight divisions, and then as the 202 pound and under, and I actually placed fourth, and then they changed it to 212, and I've competed three times in the 212. Uh, best placement there probably was only 10th or something, I haven't haven't done real well there. And every time you don't win, you got overlooked. Um, that's how it works. <laughs> and, no, um, you could kind of tell how, how the, the results of the contest are going to go based on call outs at prejudging. And, and typically, they call out five people, compare them, call out another five, compare them, call out another five, compare them you know, if there were 15 people. So there's your 15. <clears throat> and then they may go back and say, okay, there, there was maybe, you know, one or two guys in that second call out that maybe deserve to be in that top five. So they'll bring some of those first five out with maybe some of the second five and compare them. And then usually at the very end, the last, they'll call out maybe two or three and, and you know those are, those are your top two or three. Um, and so by overlooked, I, I meant that I, I would have thought having won three contests, I didn't, I didn't expect to be in the first five call out. I hoped that maybe I could be competitive with them, but I was hoping to be, like my goal going in was let's get in the second call out and maybe I'll be on that, in that sixth, seventh range and they might think, okay, maybe he deserves to be compared to some of the people in the first and I would get that opportunity, you know, in a, in a later call out. They went like five, 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 something like that. I ended up being in the third call out of five. So I knew like 10th, 10th to 15th was the best I was going to do. And there was no additional call outs, no, you know, mixing up of the competitors. And so you just know after prejudging, it really like mathematically, it would be impossible for me to get better than 10th place. Um, as it turned out, I actually beat somebody that was in a call out before me, which was totally absurd. Like, how do you beat someone you're not even compared to? So I don't know. I think the judges were literally exhausted from judging so many people, That's maybe. Like and I always say to people, like, it's subjective and it depends on those judges sitting down in the front. And typically it depends really on the head judge and because the, the head judge is even going to dictate to those. If the head judge is is good according to the judging standards, they're gonna to dictate to the rest of them, 
And if the president is sitting behind the head judge, speaking to the head judge, it's all dictated, you know? And so, I mean, that's fine. It is what it is. And I've been competing, obviously, for a long time. It's just, like I said, either deal with it or take up bowling and count how many pins get knocked down because that's the only way to take subjectivity out of it in, in, a, in a sense. So, so this was me prepping for the Olympia. Um, I think I've already spoke on sort of what qualifies me. Um, so we can, we can hit the next slide. Nutrition for improving health. Um, even before I jump into this, and like I said, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, so uh, don't listen to me. That's the subtext on the bottom. Like, I'm not responsible for you. I would say even before I dive into nutrition, um, get your blood work done. How many people get blood work done? That, that's actually fairly impressive, because um, I've, I've asked that question before sometimes and nobody raises their hand. I mean, if if you're competing particularly in bodybuilding, and I don't care whether there's drugs involved or not, you're putting your, your body through a lot of demands. And you know a lot of bodybuilders nutrition-wise just think chicken and rice, and that's not particularly healthy for longevity. And so getting blood work done and having somebody knowledgeable enough to, to speak into that, most of the MDs that I've dealt with just complained to me <laughs> um, about my lifestyle. And so I either, go, I either go to a naturopath who thinks more holistically, or I just go to directlabs.com and I, do most of, I get most of my blood work done myself and give it to naturopaths or people that I know that are knowledgeable. And um, if the inside is functioning well, I know with bodybuilding, it's all about the exterior, but if your insides aren't functioning well, whether, whether you wanna be an idiot and only think five years down the road uh, or not, you're gonna, your, your ability to recover better, to grow and everything else is, is going to be better if you're healthy on the inside. Otherwise, it's just like you're fighting with yourself. So get blood work done, you know, at least, I, I try to do at least three times a year, if not four, uh, if you've never done it, you know, just you owe it to yourself to do it. Don't be afraid of what you're going to see um, because you can, you can make changes and, and improve things, you know. But if you don't look, you're never going to know. So, so get some blood work done. Um, you can hit the next one here. So here's some of my assumptions. We all like to eat, right? Who doesn't love to eat? That burger looks super good to me right now. The, the other thing I'll say, too, is... Um, actually, go ahead and you can hit the next slide. These are just my assumptions. We all want to look good naked. And here we have this older gentleman. I mean, look at the tone of that muscle. He's really powerful holding that crown of broccoli. He probably has no cancer because of it. Um, does not have erectile dysfunction. Like, that's the picture of, of what I want to be when I'm older. I'm, I'm highly skeptical um, of the U.S. government. Um, I'm highly skeptical of the FDA and the USDA. Part, partly, I say that because I remember in being in college in a nutrition course, even though I, I graduated uh, with a degree in business, and in this nutrition course, they were telling me how fantastic trans fats were because it was good for your heart and saturated fat was so evil. You know, if, we, if everyone was just consuming trans fats, it would be so much better. And now, obviously, we all know everyone's, including the government, is saying how horrible that is. Now, they're still saying trans fats are, or excuse me, saturated fat is bad, which I'm not in agreement with, with that. But, um, but I am a bit skeptical um, of that. So based on the assumptions, go ahead and hit that, that next slide. Um, some things um, to improve health is controlling, um, controlling inflammation. And um, acute inflammation is when you work out and you experience some trauma and, and some pain from that. And that's fine, that's good, that's your body's way of healing itself. 
it's the chronic inflammation that really is detrimental to our health. And the more I read and the more <clears throat> that I've experienced that um, high inflammation leads to all sorts of chronic, chronic uh, health conditions from heart disease to diabetes um, to even cancer, is, it seems to be linked to uh, chronic inflammation. And so um, I guess the question is, how do you combat it? And, and combating it is through this slide here, is minimizing, um, minimizing processed foods. You know, if we can just eat a whole food diet, this slide says, if your food can go bad, it's good for you. If your food can't go bad, it's not good for you. That's, that's boiled down to something pretty basic, uh, but it does tend to hold true. Uh, we're in, in a fresh cut produce business and we, we cook potatoes and shred them and sell them to restaurants for hash browns for breakfast restaurants and such. And one of our competitors, we got their product because we wanted to do some testing on it. And we left their product out because we don't add any, anything to our produce, which is why we have to have like a JIT system and, and uh, get the product to the end user as quickly as possible because we have a limited shelf life. So we got some competitor's product that we wanted to do some testing on and left it. Uh, my operations manager accidentally left it out on his desk and was on vacation and it was out for a week. And when he came back, it was still lily white potatoes. Like if ours were out that long, it would be awfully, it would be black, you know, oxidized. Um, but there's, their product was full of chemicals and, and whatnot. And so anything you can try to do to eliminate um, processed foods, um, is beneficial.